views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. What do you do when you have time on your hands? Lots of it. This is a real challenge in retirement. What do you do with all those hours? Decide to be your own boss and move forward with zero guilt and zero regrets. Tune in to Fresh Courage Radio. It's your time to shine with host Sharon Rolfe on Transformation Talk Radio. We all have something special to share with the world, but many of us fail to use our innate talents to the fullest possible potential. Communities, cities, and nations grow stronger when everyone brings forward their unique gifts and talents to build and to create. We're creating with a freedom we never had before. It's not a trap. It's not a dream. You really are free. Time is your key to unlocking a life kept in waiting. Let's get started. There's no time to waste on Fresh Courage Radio with Sharon Rolfe now. Hi, I'm your host, Sharon Rolfe, and you're listening to Fresh Courage, the It's Your Time to Shine program, and coming to you on Transformation Talk Radio. And um, I, we're here to help you live wholeheartedly, to enjoy everything, to live boldly. And uh, we, I want you to find a meaningfulness that ends in no regrets in your life. So it, that often takes fresh courage. So last week, I posed a question to you. Have you forgotten who you are? And that's a, a line from Lion King. And so um, you might have been an expert trumpet player or scientist or uh, neighbor when you were younger years, and we want you to embrace uh, the the person you used to be, be and remember in retirement, nothing's changed. You're still that dynamic person, and we want to help you, uh, encourage you along the way to revive those dreams and um, experiences that you've had before that meant a lot to you. My guest today is Paul Long, and he's grown up in the news business, followed two generations into reporting, anchoring, weatherman, producer, and then a content creator and uh, Emmy award-winning producer of videos. In this season of life, he's helping people to have a healthy, energetic, and fulfilling life. So, um, hello, welcome, Paul, to Fresh Courage. It's great to be here, Sharon. Thanks for having me. Welcome, sure. So, um, as in introducing Paul in our subject today, you know, as the years go by, years come and go, and we put kids to the co- to college, and we're paying for the mortgage, and we tend to forget about having courage and thinking about we versus me. Um, we forget to think about making a, where I could make a difference. Um, who needs me now uh, when maybe you're feeling isolated or depressed instead of hopeful and curious? And maybe you're through with taking risk and be, being vulnerable is now let's be safe and monotonous and unhappy. <laughs> This is um, when we have all kinds of time freedom on our hands. Um, our excuses before we realize it becomes can become the dark side of retirement. And um, that isn't talked about so much. Isolation is huge. And 
that often leads to suicide and alcoholism. And, you know, there are lots of reality shows around, but there's nobody talking about the dark side of retirement. So I asked Paul here to help us not go there and help us get focused on what energetic and fulfilling life uh, we could have. And um, Paul, any comments before we launch into today's uh, topic? Uh, no, uh, I, I think uh, not necessarily. You're, you're, you're spot on. I think a, 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 a huge thing is that amazingly, so many people are approaching retirement age or learning the hard way after they've got into retirement that the presumptions and assumptions of what this phase of life would be couldn't be more incorrect. Now, I, I want to say right from the get, get go that for some people, traditional retirement is perfect. And for those people, congratulations, Godspeed, you've earned it. Unfortunately, for some people, they feel that way for about a year or two. And as you were mentioning, the, the, the retirement honeymoon is over. Um, so for people to realize this ahead of time, I mean, think of it this way. We go throughout our adult lives, starting as teenagers, planning, projecting, figuring it out, strategizing it, thinking it through. Where am I going to go to school? What am I going to study? What is my career going to be? Planning a family, my kids' lives, all of this planning and thinking through and research. And yet when it comes to retirement, so many people are like, oh, well, you just don't work anymore and you can go on trips and you can do the bucket list. Um, yet in the first place, not only is that old fashioned thinking because we had this increased lifespan and increased health span and in a completely different world where all of these things are available to us, there are all of these possibilities. And if you're, you know, in your fifties, you might only be through half of your life. You might only be half of your, through half of your life. And you say, oh, but a lot of that's going to be being old like my grandparents were. No, wrong. I mean, the, you, you have the opportunity to be, you know, 70 years old and the equivalent to a 40-year-old in your grandparents' generation in terms of that, plus all the technology and everything else. And so on the one hand, like you say, there's a dark side. And of people going into retirement and not realizing the consequences of having a lack of purpose. Something you said earlier reminded me of something a mutual colleague of ours, Robert Laura, said someone said to him, don't ever retire because you will not mean anything to anybody, even family members to a degree. Yes, they'll still love you. You'll still help with the grandkids, but they're living life. You're not. And so in a way, you've become less relevant because you don't understand. I'm out here trying to make things happen. You're kind of going la-di-da um, through your life. Uh, and that that's when people lose that purpose or the chance to aspire or go after something or accomplish something, the change in relationships. You had a relationship dynamic that was based on decades of you and or your spouse working now. All of a sudden, that has radically changed. And that's why divorces are so, so far out. So it's at the very least due to people approaching retirement to think about this and to realize this. And even if you're in retirement and you're coming out of that honeymoon going, uh-oh, what have life have I married myself to, to start looking at possibilities. And that's why I started Pro Boomer, uh, which was designed to, A, bring awareness and then also bring options for people to find a path and or if they wanted to keep working, if they wanted to start a business, if they wanted to create some sort of new employment situation or overcome ageism, would have tools with which to do it. Wow, that's really convincing that, um, yeah, the, the going from irrelevant, it, the dichotomy of, of aliveness versus irrelevant. And I think we all have a certain amount of fear about that. So um, let's get, uh, so, uh, do you have a question you might want our audience to ponder today as we're going through our interview? Well, I think if 
think 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 of yourself back. It, it, I'll, uh, two questions. One: Did you ever imagine if you could go back to your twenties? Did you ever imagine that you would feel and be like you are at this age? Mm. And overwhelmingly, I'm not the only person asking this question. And overwhelmingly, I mean myself, I cannot frigging believe I am the chronological age that I am. I don't physically feel this way. I don't think this way. My spirit, my soul, my desire to do things is nothing. It's like I was in my 30s. In fact, I often say there's my chronological age, my health age, where I'm beneficial. I'm, 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 I benefit. My doctor says I'm 20, 25 years younger. But my desire to do things and learn new things and try new things and be inventive I'm still in my 30s, except I've got decades of life. So that that's then this is the second question. Imagine going back into your 20s when you're looking at your life and your career ahead of you and trying to figure out what do I want to do with it? Well, back then you didn't know much. You didn't know much about yourself and you didn't know much about life. Imagine this time in life as being that again, except you do know yourself. You do know what you like and what you don't like and what you're good at and what you're not good at. And by the way, the distinction of, you know, so often in business or careers, we do what we can do. Now is an opportunity to do something that you want to do. And it doesn't have to be 40 or 80 hours a week. There are all sorts of possibilities. So if you could almost think of yourself for a moment as that 22 year old going, what am I going to do with my life? But now you've got even more possibilities and more awareness within you. Now, what would you do? Okay, so we're going to jump into um, overcoming our top excuses, five top excuses. And we've just got um, about a minute and a half. So let's just introduce it, Paul, and we'll come back and, and uh, maybe what the excuse is. And then when we come back, we'll say how to solve it. Uh, and yes, uh, in that quick minute and a half, um, I, I heard from so many people, including my own head, uh, these excuses why at my age, or, or quite frankly, a lot of this applies to anyone at any age, what are the excuses for not moving forward? or for not taking a bit of a risk or trying something. When I say risk, not necessarily financial risk, there's, you know, there's all the internal so-called risks that we have. But I also thought about the rocking chair test, that when I am in my last days, the number one regret that people have is they didn't go for it. They didn't go for something. So I, I, I took on this, this large blog uh, article to say, what are these excuses? And how do we look at them differently to overcome it? Okay, so uh, you're listening to A Fresh Courage on Transformation Talk Radio. And when we come back, we're going to dive into overcoming our excuses. So you do want to stay uh, informed and come back and, and hear the rest of our show today. Thank you. Are you there? I don't see Paul. Oh, okay. I can, I can hear you just fine. You are listening to Fresh Courage on Transformation Talk Radio. And this is Sharon Rolf with Paul Long as my guest today. And Paul, uh, you had mentioned that your website is proboomer.com. Is that right? That is correct. Okay. So we were talking about, uh, we often uh, give good excuses for not moving forward into our uh, meaningful life, our bliss, our joy. And uh, what's that first excuse again? Tell us. I don't have a great idea. Oh, hmm. Never had one of those, huh? <laughs> <laughs> So, so people don't change and move forward because they think they're not creative. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Or, or again, it's even, where do I come up with that big idea? So, so what I've been 
finding um, uh, in the pro-boomer effort and also with other colleagues, even with myself, was that in the first place, there are some people who are approaching or reaching retirement age, and they do view this as my turn. I've done all these things that I've wanted to do throughout my life, or oh. better yet, I've done what I was supposed to do. I went to college, I had a career, I raised a family, I sent my kids through college. Now it's my turn. And for some of them, they've always had that big idea that they want to maybe bring to fruition, but that still, to your point, takes courage with which to do it. Any endeavor like such as that does, but of course, the more courage it takes, the bigger the payoff. But also a lot of people are like, well, I don't have any big ideas and I'm not a big idea person and stuff like that. Nonsense. There are ways to do it. And quite frankly, if you go out through success stories and innovations and history of corporations and such, Many times, the people who were these great innovators and creators said the same thing. And so that was the first excuse uh, to deal with overcoming the top five excuses was, you know, I don't have a great idea. Well, in the first place, there are ways to come up with a great idea. Um, so first of all, um, you know, there's a great quote from Tim Ferriss. If people know who he is, he's an exceptionally popular, brilliant guy with, with millennials and Gen Xers, and I hope boomers too. He wrote The Four Hour Work Week. He knows how to deconstruct things. He wrote incredible book, Tools of Titans, from all these incredible successful people in life. And he has these just short four or five page takes from them on how they succeeded. But a quote from him was The question you should be asking isn't, What do I want? or what are my goals, it's what would excite me. So that, that's the first thing is understanding yourself. What excites me? What do I love? I, I have a, 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 my own podcast, podcast on Pro Boomer with Elena Love, who was an HR uh, top executive, uh, Meteoric Rise. She wanted something else in her life about it. She's actually got together with the University of Michigan to come up with a passion profiler to identify not I've got a passion for tennis or golf or something like that, but rather what is it within you that really drives you? Uh, one of her clients had um, was a top executive in the fashion industry. She took the profiler and, and the three top archetypes, as they're called, well, one was to uh, as a creative and one was to be altruistic. She wasn't doing that even though she was in the fashion industry. So she had identified within herself what excited her. Now then the other angle though is, okay, great. I know what I want now. How do I come up with a big idea? There's a man named Jay Samet, S-A-M-I-T, who is known as the great disruptor because he's the kind of guy that has looked at something existing or something new and has figured out a way to apply it to a need that people have. And as a result of that, I mean, it's unbelievable the list of innovations that he's come up with. And here's how he done, did it. This is so simple. It's amazing. It says, take the next 30 days of your life. Take the next 30 days and have a pad and paper next to your toothbrush or next to your bed. And every day... Before you go to bed, write down three problems you saw or experienced in life. And what happens over that 30 days is, is you not only come up with an impressive list, but all of a sudden there are certain problems and needs that you're seeing that start resonating within you. In fact, I'll lay you high odds that uh, likely odds that some of those ideas, if not one of those ideas, all of a sudden you're going to find yourself thinking about it. It's going to be percolating naturally, yeah. or excuse me, organically within your mind. And you're going to identify it because you can relate to it. You can have an idea for it. And then look at your skills, look at your talents, look at your abilities and start applying those. So Pro Boomer, for instance, for me was a total outgrowth on this. I saw this need of this transformation in society, this transformation in the lives of boomers and all of these needs that people were having. In fact, my original concept dealt with everything. I, I needed to narrow it down. <laughs> I'm bootstrapping this effort. But it also played into, well, what have I done over my career? I've been a writer. I've been a creator. I've been a producer. I've been an aggregator. I've been a journalist. And all of a sudden, 
it just one day it was just boom, this is what <laughs> I want to do. And so that big idea is out there. And I'll, I'll add one more last thing and to credit uh, the Wall Street Journal. And it wrote an article, you can Google it, called How Entrepreneurs Come Up With Great Ideas. And here's the quick list, if I may. Look at what's bugging you. Okay. Jason. Mm -hmm. You're never too old. That's the number two line that they had. You're never too old. And considering the fact you've got all these years of healthy life ahead of you, you aren't too old. Be present in life. Now that here again is both grounding and helps you observe things. Ideas are abundant. Drive isn't because we know, and I've got 30 feet behind me, file drawers full of great ideas that never came to fruition because I didn't have the driver do it right. Um, let your subconscious do the work. Here again, when you start thinking and seeing all these problems, you, your, your subconscious will start taking over. Attack practical problems, head into the weird places, which is also like think out of the box and think out of the box about yourself. We are all more capable and have more options than we ever imagined. We're the most self-limiting creatures on the planet. Uh, search for a better way. Think big. Think taking it to the market. Listen to people who know. And we'll be covering more of that in a moment. Get inspired by history. I could give you example, example, example of people who were like, who the heck am I to do this? Who did it? And they're famous and they succeeded and they made a difference in our world. Be prepared to shift gears, which is huge. Whatever you're imagining now, it's going to be different six months from now and six years from now. And you can't rush the, gr the brain. So have we moved on to overcoming excuse number two, Paul? Uh, yes, which is I don't have the right skills or experience or knowledge. And if you really stop for a moment and think about it in the first place in this day and age, are you kidding me? When you can go on Google or you can go on YouTube and you can even find out how to build a nuclear bomb and you don't <laughs> think that you can discover what the skills or experience or knowledge is. Two quick angles on this. Number one is that for the last 13 years, every I have a morning routine, which has also become very popular, where it's just about me. All the electronics are off, except in one case, which we'll hear about. It's a time for meditation and start the day and launch my day in the right direction. But what I've done during yoga every morning, stretching on my own, is I listen to people talk on YouTube. I listen to thought leaders on every imaginable topic, but certainly like with, with launching Pro Boomer, it's not only Boomer talk topics, but it's how to start a business, how to run a business, how to find motivation, how to overcome things such as this. So there are so many things that you can learn online, or there are all sorts of uh, course studies that you can take online or at local schools and everything. In fact, there are often a lot of breaks for boomers or seniors uh, mm -hmm. with which to do that. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the other thing is, is that, you know, so often we think that, that Steve Jobs knew it all or Jeff Bezos or, or the president of the United States at any time in history. But here's the fact and it, is that no one knows it all. And the really, really, really successful people know how to identify where their strengths are and where their weaknesses are and where their knowledge gaps are. In fact, going back to Tim Ferriss in the foreword of Tools of Titans, he says, we imagine these people to be phenomenal in every respect, but where their strength lies is, is that they, they did one or two or three things really well and they knew what they didn't do well. Mm -hmm. And they filled those gaps with either learning or better yet, the people who are really good on that. Real quick aside, in my content creation business and even somewhat in the news business, we came up with concepts that had never been done before, or certainly some that I had never been done before. I mean, really hang it out there, almost scary stuff. Where I was beneficial is, is that I identified my gaps. I'm, I don't know about this, I don't. And I went out and I found people who were good at that. And the sum of all of its part is what made it successful. So our first excuse is that I 
don't have anything interesting. Uh, no, what was that again? Our first. Uh, the, the first one is I don't have the great idea. A great Everybody idea. Everybody can find a great idea. And the second excuse was I don't know how to fix it. I don't have the right skills, experience, or knowledge with which to do it. By the way, one more quick thing, if I can add, because th this is a good, good bottom line to it. There was uh, a woman named uh, Abby Fleck, and she had an idea on how to cook quickly, efficiently, and with less mess bacon in the microwave. <laughs> she came up with this idea. Well, she had no idea how to manufacture, how to market, how to bring this to market and, and everything else, but she did and she's made millions. She was eight years old, <laughs> eight years old. When she, and it wasn't like her father was this master of the universe either. Together, they she had this great idea. She had the passion for it. They found the people and the resources with which to, you know, I wouldn't mind being 12 years old and being a millionaire. <laughs> All right. Well, we've got lots to talk about today. I hope you're taking some notes because uh, we can learn from everybody, can't we? So uh, stay tuned for our excuse number three, four, and five, and um, hear how we can connect with Paul um, on his websites. Thank you for listening. Courage with Sharon Rolf, and uh, we're on Transformation Talk Radio, and my guest today is Paul Long, and he has a website, proboomer.com, and some tools that you might find beneficial there on assessing your where you are with moving forward into a meaningful um, and, and vi vital life. So Paul's been ta talking to us about overcoming our excuses and um, what's excuse number three now, Paul? I don't have time. What? <laughs> <laughs> well, and, you know, that's probably in this day and age, something that we're always seeming to talk about. I don't have enough time. And by the way, I besides Pro Boomer, I still have my content creation business going. Plus, I'm in a multi-decade relationship and I have two sons who granted they've moved away, but uh, you never stop being a parent. But, you know, I heard somebody put it this way, and it's not an exact quote, but whether you're rich or poor, whether you're famous, successful or whatever, you only have 24 hours in a day. We all only have 24 hours in a day. It's yeah. what you do with that. 24 hours. And especially in my case, uh, and as I mentioned earlier, every morning when I do yoga, I listen to these people on YouTube and everything. It's absolutely amazing. YouTube is one of the most phenomenal tools ever. And I listen to people like Tim Ferriss or John Asaroff or um, James Clear, who's a habit hacker, um, uh, Brian Tracy, Brendan Bruchard, uh, who have these methods that you don't have to necessarily embrace any of them. And this goes way beyond, you know, the Stephen Covey planners and things of that sort, but ways to be more efficient with your time, ways to, um, uh, ways to be more effective and focused. You know, for instance, I learned that if I'm writing something and I get interrupted by an email and it takes me three minutes to respond to it, that scientifically they've actually shown that it's the equivalent of a 20 minute delay because wow. of how it takes you out of there. So it's about being more efficient in your time, but it's also about habits. You know, it's having the habits to get up and go and do things. I love what James Clear says, because when, when, when you're, when you do have a busy life and you're trying to start something that you don't necessarily have a boss or a, a loved one, you know, demanding it of you, it's hard to get it done. Like, let's say I'm going to go to the gym every day. Well, James Clear has this brilliant habit where it's like, don't focus on the fact that I have to go to the gym every day. Focus on the first 1% of the effort that it takes to go to the gym. Don't focus on going to the gym. Focus on getting your gym bag and walking out the door. Uh, or Mel Robbins, uh, she, she came up with this brilliant concept 
where literally they were in real financial trouble and things weren't going well. And one night after a couple of Manhattan, she said she saw a rocket launching and she said, that's what I'm going to do tomorrow. I'm not going to hit the snooze button. I'm going to go five, four, three, two, one and get up and go. Well, she's turned it into a business <laughs> because what she found out about this method is, is that when you count backwards from five to one, one thing counting backwards to your brain, you've got five seconds to take that action. If you wait longer than five seconds, you're not going to take that action. So you get in that habit and it works. So the point is, is that we do have time. The one other thing I, I wish I had put in the original blog and I need to update <coughs> it is, is that as we're getting older, some, we are hearing the clock tick. And, and we, we don't have, we do still have our whole lives in front of us, but we, we, we do have more limited time, uh, even if it is 30 or 40 or 50 years. So that's the other side of the coin. We've got more time than we think that we do. And in some ways, it's almost more important now for us to find things that give us relevance and purpose and make a difference. Mm -hmm. I don't have time. So, so that um, if, it, well, part of it is, your boss used to set the deadlines for you. Yes, yes. And now you have to set your own deadlines. And to me, the five, four, three, two, one is a deadline. Yes. And it does, it does something for our brain, yeah. I, it's an immediate deadline. Now, I'm glad you brought that up too, because in, in listening to these performance experts, because it really is about personal performance, uh, which, which if you're going to do something special, you need. Um, uh, like Brendan Bruchard, I, I, I will hear so many of them say, set deadlines for yourself. When are you going to get this part figured out? When are you going to figure this out? Uh, I'm bad at that. And when I do that, I, I'm like, why don't I do this all the time? It's one of those. Well, and the other part that enters into that is one of the first things I learned in business. I don't know why um, it was first, but um, oh, I know I, I, I was scheduling computer time and um, I had to know what was the priority and priorities help say, OK, these jobs have to get done. These other ones aren't. So so setting priorities on our personal time is takes out that. I don't have time because you make time for the priorities. So, okay, yes, absolutely, absolutely. And by the by the way, one point on that the 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 planner that I use, and I hear this from other people, is is that I set uh, it, it forces me to set three priorities every day. That at the mm -hmm. exclusion of all else, these three things get done. Now, one of those things I make personal, so it might be my workout. Uh, or it might be the way I want to be, toward, you know, I want to be a little more cognizant to being grateful and, and helpful and things of that mm -hmm. sort. Mm -hmm. uh, so very good point. Yeah. Okay. What's excuse number four? Number four, I'm too late. Okay. So we could certainly automatically think I'm too late in life. And as we've already talked about, the opposite is true. This is probably the most optimum time of existence in yeah. human history, as well as in your life when you've got the uh, the experience, the knowledge that you've you've honed your skill. How many people flourish? You know, Monet did his greatest paintings in his 80s when he said, "I think I finally got it figured out." You've got all of this experience. You've got the networks. You've got the money. This is why. Here's a stunning fact for you. Over the last several years, according to the, a study by the Kauffman Foundation, boomers and millennials, startups. Boomers outpace millennials in the number of startups in the United States every year by a two to one margin. Mm. Gen Xers mm. are a little bit higher as you would expect them, but the likelihood of that, ex of that uh, entrepreneurial endeavor succeeding goes up dramatically when it's boomers. Why? Because they've got the experience, they've got the networks, and most businesses are started by personal savings, not just the entrepreneur, but maybe friends, families, colleagues. So that's one thing, too late in life. But the other thing, too, is, is that, well, that's already been invented, or somebody's already come up with that or whatever. Well, the fact of the matter is, is that you know, the, the, there are two great sayings. One is, damn the ancients, for they have stolen my ideas. <laughs> And number two, pioneers end up, you can tell pioneers by the arrows in their back. 
The fact mm -hmm. is, is that almost great, every great innovation, Steve Jobs, Bill Gates, you know, those guys did not invent. They took the best things or going back to Jay Samet again, you can look at applications and technology or solutions or businesses and everything, and you can have a better way of doing it. Or you well, can have a way that's more suitable for your target audience. Well, and I keep being amazed at how best practices has been in, you know, business for so long. And, and yet people keep improving everything. I, I, that just keeps amazing me. And I'm so glad people are keeping improving things. So, okay, we're going to go to another break and uh, you want to come back and listen to uh, Paul's fifth excuse for over, or over how to overcome the fifth excuse. And uh, we'll be right back. Thanks for listening. So this is Fresh Courage. It's your time to shine with Sharon Rolf. And we're on Transformation Talk Radio. My guest today is Paul Long, and we've been covering a lot of excuses and how to overcome them. So uh, our last excuse was that I'm too late. Somebody's already done it. And uh, if I link that with one of his first comments was the um, that <laughs> the I'm too uh, well, help me out well, here, Paul. Yeah, yeah. Well, there, there, there were the, I don't have a great idea, which if you kind of make the effort and take, take a very simple method of just starting to observe where there are problems yeah. and needs, you come up with them. I don't have the right skills or experience. So easy to learn those now. Plus, uh, you can always hire somebody else to do your social media for you. Uh, and I don't have time, which, which uh, uh, you know, you do if you get organized. And then, yeah, I'm too late in life or I'm too late because somebody else has come up with it. And, you know, quite frankly, you could say that, I mean, even um, uh, you could say that uh, Steve Jobs and Bill Gates and Jeff Bezos were too late. They weren't. They were just right. They, they took other ideas or they transformed technology or possibilities into new things. And I think there's actually something to be said that if you don't think something's as good as it could be exactly. to ask yourself as you go to sleep or how could we improve this, the whole question aspect, how could it be made better, um, gets your subconscious engaged in um, answering that question for you. And, and, and I'll, throw, I'll throw a quick one out to, to your listeners. Consider this. Getting older, okay. At some point in our lives, you know, even though we've been talking about how healthy and vibrant and all the possibilities we have into our 70s, 80s, and even 90s, there is probably going to come a time when we are more challenged, aka assisted living and, and uh, where we really need some care. That needs reinventing. The current situation in every way, shape, or form does not cut it. If you've had older parents or you know other people who have gone through it, you know what a nightmare it can be and how inappropriate it is. There are some people, there's aging 2.0, which you can look up online that are trying to, so who better than us because we're taking care of ourselves and our own future. That's something that could be transformed. So nursing homes have been around a long time. You're not too late. They need change. <laughs> okay. What's that? Uh, that excuse number five, Paul. That excuse number five is I can't take the risk. And this is number one. I can't take the risk. Or who am I to do this? Well, anyone who has done anything in the first place has said, who the heck am I to do this? But they yeah. went out and they did it anyway. Mm -hmm. Certainly in any entrepreneur, you know, entrepreneurial endeavor or even changing careers or continuing to work or changing your work concepts. So many, there are now millions of, of different iterations of how people are continuing to work into older age from being a consultant to part-time to special projects to, to whatever. But I, I, I'll, I'll first of all give you two quotes that I, that I put in the blog that I think are really good. The first one from Mark Twain, 20 years from now, you will be more disappointed by the things you didn't do than by the ones you did. Explore, dream, discover. And then Helen Keller, who said security is mostly a superstition. Life is either a daring adventure or <laughs> nothing. So I got to tell you, I have thought about being on my deathbed. Now, 
some people call this a rocking chair test. That's a little more palatable. And I thought, do you know, what am I going to regret? Well, am I going to regret that thing that I said to Kim 20 years ago when in a heated moment? Yeah. But what I'm really going to regret is not going after it. Not, you know, what was my legacy? Yes, I had great careers. Yes, I raised two wonderful children. I had a phenomenal relationship. But I mean, really, you know, what am I going to regret not going after? And, and I, I, so I've, I've literally envisioned how I would feel. And I realized that, for instance, with Pro Boomer, I had to go after this. And the thing is, is that even though I've just started out, even though I've got, I've got a book full of lists of things to do, even though I've got challenges, even though it's a lot of hours and everything, it is so fulfilling to do this. It, it is literally a journey I am enjoying, uh, even though I'm far from being there, if there is, <laughs> even if there is a there. Okay, well, I do have this little art block that kind of goes along with what Paul is saying daily do something that brings you happiness, health and wealth. And that can be even in 200 years old. So that's a, a great summary of both what you're doing in, in yoga and how you structure your day. So what I'm really wanting to close our uh, session with here today, it's only about three, four minutes left. But Paul made this award-winning uh, documentary um, that really is how the Peace Corps got started. And I think this is an ideal time for us boomers to get re-engaged with uh, the Peace Corps. So, Paul, tell us more about why you did this and um, how you promote it. It, it was, uh, it's called A Passing of the Torch. And if you Google A Passing of the Torch, Vimeo, V-I-M-E-O, uh, it'll direct you to it and you can watch it. It's an hour long. Ostensibly, when I started this documentary, it, it dealt with the 50th anniversary of candidate John F. Kennedy on the steps of the Michigan Union at the University of Michigan, giving an impromptu speech and bringing up the concept, it wasn't called the Peace Corps, the concept of the Peace Corps. Now, here's what was really interesting. That was October 18th, 1960. And what I really learned was that was the beginning of the 60s. What was the 60s? We, man we think of that as protest marches, sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Those were manifestations. What actually happened beginning then was that there was a transformation that for the first time in history, the youth, baby boomers, were able to say, wait a minute, I'm not going to live my life the way my parents or society expects me to. We're going to do things differently. So on that night, it was John, he had just finished one of his debates with Richard Nixon, had flown to Ann Arbor in order just to just go to sleep because he was going to do a whistle stop tour the next day. When he got there at two o'clock in the morning, there were 10 thousand students waiting for him. Now, keep in mind, this is 1960. You had to be 21 years old to vote and women had a curfew. Okay. 10,000 students. So I talked to so many people who were there as well as other people involved like Bill Moyers and Theodore Sorensen right before he passed away, Harris Wofford, um, uh, 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 and, and, and so many others said, Tom Hayden, thank you. You know, the activist who was the editor of the school paper at that time. And what they all told me was, was that at that time, there was something in them they couldn't put their finger on, but that they, they weren't going to take what was on offer. They were going to define. Well, what happened? All of these changes, all of these opportunities, like with the Peace Corps to invent and to signify and to make a difference. Barriers were, were torn down, gatekeepers were removed. I argue the fact that that very same generation, given this unique set of circumstances for the first time in history, are doing it again. again. That's why you have so many boomers doing doing altruistic things like the Peace Corps, being social entrepreneurs, meaning businesses that make a difference. It's happening again with the same generation. So calling forth what the activism that we uh, aspire to in that day in 1961 <clears throat> is calling us still to be an activist in our older age. So there's not a deadline for us. Correct. Because I think that's part of where that vitality comes 
to uh, have meaning in our lives. So tell us again how to get, uh, well, I need to also let, my website is effortlessvitality.org. And uh, you can find me on Quilted Petunia uh, on Etsy website. And uh, Paul, your social media is? Uh, I, uh, you can look up Pro Boomer, P-R-O-B-O-O-M-E-R uh, on Facebook. You can look up Paul Long, L-O-N-G, on uh, LinkedIn. And, of course, ProBoomer.com. Uh, you can subscribe for free. You only get a weekly uh, email. Or, um, and, but I also say, uh, especially because we're launching, uh, not only want people to, to view, but to comment, to share ideas, constructive criticism, everything. Uh, this is about building a community uh, to make a difference in our lives and the lives of others. Thank you so much for being here today, Paul. Thank and, you for having um, me. This was great. We're going to hear from Sarah Gerber next week on solo aging. Thanks for listening. Ready to take some liberties and call some shots? I know I am. Join in next week on Fresh Courage Radio. It's your time to shine with Sharon Rolfe on TransformationTalkRadio.com. If you still need some inspiration, let your curiosity lead you. Many still find their lives ruled by the clock, but you forge your own path. You are starting on a journey that will lead you outward, out of isolation, and inward to your true desires for life. There is no map where we're going, but let Sharon Rolf be your guide in a new world of possibilities. Find your passion, find your reason, find your fun, and everything you dreamed of. Every week brings new insights and ideas to light your way and elevate your day. To learn more about Fresh Courage Radio with Sharon Rolfe, please visit EffortlessVitality.org.